Coming up on this edition of MHS Rewind, we'll have a preview of homecoming activities planned for next week. We'll travel to Bradford Woods for a look at the Plus Seniors, and we'll have a story on a former MHS student who's quickly becoming a racing star. And in sports, we'll have a look at how the girls captured another golf sectional and how a senior broke three school records in a span of two days. Good morning, MHS. I'm Brianna Waltz. And I'm Emmy Carroll. We'll have all those stories and more coming up on this edition of MHS Rewind. Homecoming is next week and Student Council has many interesting events planned for the week. Riley Dalton has the story. Since the beginning of the 2018-19 school year, Student Council has been planning for homecoming by holding many meetings to make this year's homecoming week better than ever. Um, last year it was kind of a uh, put out small fires everywhere. Ms. Hoff and I didn't really know what we were doing, so this year we just hope to promote it even more, get even more kids involved, just make it as big as we can. They hope to bring up participation in the students by having a powder puff game, talent show, spirit week, bonfire, pep session, homecoming dance, and more. I feel really confident. I feel like it's going to be a great week. I think we'll have a lot of fun. I think we have a lot of fun events planned this week and a lot of like traditions that we'll just continue to make better. Last year, Student Council gave half their proceeds to Dance Marathon. This year, they are looking to double it. Get into the bookstore and buy your ticket. Spear Week starts Monday with Jersey Day, then Tie-Dye Tuesday, Workout Wednesday, Let's Glow Thursday, then ending the week with Red and Blue Friday. For MHS Rewind, I'm Riley Dalton. The high school's annual musical is less than two months away, and last week they held auditions. Students gathered in the music hall to practice their songs and recite monologues, anxiously awaiting their turn to perform for the musical directors. I wasn't nervous at like the beginning of the day. Like some people get nervous like the whole time, but like I only get nervous like right before. So it's like kicking in right now. To combat the nerves, students committed a lot of time to perfecting their auditions in order to land a role in this year's production of Mamma Mia. I prepared for the last two weeks by memorizing my monologue and writing the songs with friends and my voice lesson teacher and playing out the parts on piano. I've spent hours just saying my monologue over and over again. Just like, you know, once you think you know it, you don't. So you just have to go back over it again. Grace Betzold was in the musical her freshman and sophomore years, but took a break last year. And so now that I'm a senior, I was kind of like, I'm gonna hop back into it, you know, go for it. For Betzold and others, this show is especially exciting as it is more modern than many shows done in the past. So it's going to be a really fun production and there are going to be a lot of popular songs that are really fun to do and a lot of fun dances. I think that people will want to come and see and it's something that isn't boring. The cast list went up last Friday and students will be practicing for the next two months in order to bring Mamma Mia to life in November. The class of 2019 seniors spent a few days last week at Bradford Woods reliving some of their fifth grade memories as part of the PLUS Senior program. Carson Hacker takes a closer look. In order to be a PLUS Senior, you must complete the application at the end of your junior year. Go through an interview process and then complete a training day over the summer. Training day was really fun. It, <laughs> like, it's surprising that I actually had fun while I was learning. But I did enjoy it. Like they taught us some cool games and stuff and jokes that I didn't know. Like I felt like a kid going through Bradford Woods. The first group of plus seniors took a trip to Bradford Woods September 12th through the 14th. And as the plus seniors have said, they would encourage others to participate in the program as well. My favorite part was working with the kids because obviously like you do this for the kids because you want to be with the kids. But all the kids are super sweet and like you just get to know them. While at Bradford Woods, the fifth graders and the plus seniors participated in games like Capture the Flag. They also hiked, interpreted the weather, learned about moon rocks and animals at the lake, and sang songs before going into the dining hall. While at the dining hall, the kids participated in a yuck competition. The less uneaten food, the less yuck they received. The goal is to have zero yuck the whole time at Bradford Woods. 
It's interesting seeing how fifth graders change from when I was a fifth grader. I'm really surprised it's, it hasn't changed that much. I think it was a really good experience and I learned a lot as well about, you know, just the environment and nature and all of that that I didn't learn when I was a fifth grader. There are a total of four groups of plus seniors that will be heading to Bradford Woods this fall. The second group will be coming back this Friday and the other two groups will be heading to Bradford Woods at the beginning of October. For MHS Rewind, I'm Carson Hacker. MHS hosted a college fair last week in the gym. Style Meckling has a story. Ball State, Butler, DuPaul, and IU are just a select few of the colleges that attended the college fair last Monday. The students who attended the fair obtained important information about the colleges they were interested in, and even some they hadn't thought about. There are a lot of colleges that I never really considered that actually do have really good music education programs and jazz studies programs, so they kind of opened my eyes a little bit. The students were able to talk to the representatives of each college and get information to see if the school is an option for them. I think Butler is like the main colleges I'm interested in just because of their vocal jazz program and how nice and diverse that is. Carl Wagner is in charge of the Senior Success Center at MHS, and he organized the event. He feels the college fair was able to offer students more exposure and possibilities. If, if they don't do things like this, then, then how do they know? You know, arm yourself with information, come up with a plan of action, so this is a part of it. Preparing for colleges can be stressful, but Mr. Wagner has some advice on how to relieve the tension. We get under stress when we feel controlled by things. So I tell, I tell kids, control the process. If you miss the college fair, don't worry. There's still time and opportunities to start getting ready. You, you create your own college fair. You, you're on the internet. You go visit the colleges. For MHS Rewind, I'm Style Meckling. Two weeks ago, MHS brought in Chip Mitten, a former Olympic athlete turned motivational speaker. Presley Boyd has a closer look. Two weeks ago, Martinsville High School had their annual convocation about drugs, bullying, and suicide. Chip Mitten, a former Olympic bobsledder, professional wrestler, and now motivational speaker, came to the high school to teach the students about hope, dreams, commitment, and good choices. It's my goal and my vision to motivate these young, young students, to motivate them to be the best students they can be, to uh, build them up, to speak life into them, to encourage them, and also challenge them to make good choices. And I tell them about, about some of the things that I went through to help them uh, make good choices because I talk about some of the consequences in my own life. Mitten struggled with suicidal thoughts and drug abuse, but he got through it using his dreams as leverage to keep him going. His dreams helped him make good choices to get his life back on track. The, your dreams, or they come true by, on the foundation of your choices. So you got to make good choices, and their choices matter, their dreams matter, and I just want to encourage them to surround themselves with positive people who build them up and not tear them down. Even though Mitten came out to give a good message, the administration was disappointed in how some of the student body behaved. There was about 30% of our students upstairs or more were not on their A game for what I think we share here at Martinsville is a, a good positive culture and that we respect everybody, one another, even in all of our differences. So we missed the mark there on our own side. You know, and maybe the convocation missed its mark a little, but I think I think there was still an opportunity there to be had by some. For Emma Keller, it gave her the motivation to help her compete. It came at a great time because with golf, we had kind of been struggling with our confidence. And so having him come and talk to us kind of gave us that confidence we needed to perform well. But I wanted to leave here knowing that they can make anything come true, any dream they have is possible by making good choices and, and believing in a dream. For MHS Rewind, I'm Presley Boyd. A former MHS student is making a name for himself tearing up dirt tracks around the country while racing in the Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series. Gunnar Andrew has a closer look at the New Deal Hudson O'Neill. The New Deal Hudson O'Neill has been dominating the dirt track for the last six years following in his dad's tire tracks. My dad's the real deal and whenever I came it, it's uh, the New Deal. Nobody, I don't remember really everybody any specifically tagging me with it but it's just always been a thing. It was always a thing whenever I was little and you know my dad always joked with me about it and it was just always something that uh, you know was, was a thing whenever I was growing up and you know it just carried over. 
Even though it's a challenge being young to the racing scene, he's been learning and watching the veterans of the sport from the first time on the track to his unbelievable first win. You know, and not only for my first victory in dirt, but um, on my first uh, Lucas Oil, which is our national touring series, um, you know, it was really, really special. And to be a crown jewel event, and what a crown jewel event is, is something that pays over $20,000. And uh, it's a 100 lap race, and it's a big race. I think we have nine of them a year. So it was really, really cool, and that's uh, something I'll never forget. Hudson had a total of three victories this season before he was sidelined with a shoulder injury he got from wear and tear. But that won't stop him from living his dream. I just want to race. I, um, you know, I don't, you know, if I get a chance in the NASCAR world, then that would be awesome and I'd love to do that. Um, you know, but if I don't, I'm not going to lose any sleep over it. Um, you know, I just want to race and I'm making a healthy living doing what I'm doing now. And as long as I can do that and support a family that I'm going to have one day, then that would be awesome. And the biggest thing is I just want to race. And as long as I'm racing, I'm going to be happy. You can catch the New Deal pit reporting at Brownstown Speedway this weekend. For MHS Rewind, I'm Gunnar Andrew. Hopefully we see Hudson racing in NASCAR someday. Now let's send it over to Sierra Bauman for a look at sports. Thanks guys. The girls golf team took their shot at sectionals Monday morning in Bloomington. Nerves skyrocketed as it became time for the Artesians to take on sectional at the Cascades golf course. But they came out on top for the third year in a row with a score of 314, beating out the closest competitor by over 50 strokes. Martinsville Artesians. It feels really good because it's always a confidence booster before going into regionals where it gets really competitive. So it's exciting that we've been able to do it three times now. Senior Emma Keller captured low medalist with a 76, but it came with a little extra competition against her own teammate, Aaron Bennett, who also shot a 76. It's really exciting. It was kind of weird to have to play off against one of my own teammates, but I knew that no matter what happened, we both had great days, and so it was just exciting for Martinsville to represent that low medalist spot. Erin Bennett finished the day in second, but recorded her best round ever in a tournament. I think there are definitely some shots I left out there, but I played pretty well today. Emily Bennett finished the day in third with a 78, Skylar Hawks shot an 84, and Jenna Bauman fired an 87. The entire team finished in the top 10. You know, we have worked so hard at it and you know, hadn't fully performed to our potential and then today everything came together and uh, showed what we can do. The girls have their team goals they want to achieve as they prepare for what's next, regional. I think that it's just going to be all about staying calm and knowing that it's just time to have fun because this is our last time that we could be playing together but we're all really determined to go to state and I think after today it proved that we can go. Coach Dave Knuckles wants to take as much pressure off the girls as possible while making final preparations for regional. Well, we had a fun day on Saturday. We went down and played the course uh, where regionals are held, and we played a scramble, and the girls had a lot of fun with it. So we're going to continue and play another scramble on Wednesday. You can catch the Artesians at regional on Saturday, September 22nd, at Country Oaks in Montgomery, Indiana. In a two-day period a couple of weeks ago, an MHS senior broke not one, not two, but three school records. Olivia Osler has the story. Caleb Urban is showing no mercy on Martinsville High School's record books. He started his record-setting run on Thursday at a soccer game against Mooresville. He scored six goals against the Pioneers and broke the record for most goals in a game. The six goals also gave him the school record for goals in a career. The all-time scoring one was just a surreal moment and I didn't know I had the longest or the most goals in a game until after the game was over. The performance was even more special because he got to do it in front of his dad, Daniel Urban, the head coach. You know, it's it's great for the team uh, that these guys, that everybody, got to be a part of this, and also too from a father, it's great to see my kid have that individual success. Not only was Caleb's father proud, but his team was proud of him too. Well, getting the ball to him for the assist was amazing, and just seeing him put in the back of the net, knowing all the hard work he put in, it just felt, felt great. Just a day later, Urban moved from the soccer field to the football field where he set his third record in two nights. Urban hit a 50-yard field goal against Decatur Central and broke the record for longest field goal he had set just last year. Urban got his first college wow. offer for football later that weekend from Valparaiso. For MHS Rewind, I'm Olivia Osler. It was pink night last Thursday at Artesian Field as the girls' soccer team hosted Edgewood. 
The girls wore pink jerseys in support of breast cancer awareness. Julia Ritchie found Blaney Pueblo on a corner kick to put the Arties up early. Terranova Zyk found the back of the net a few minutes later to increase the lead to 2-0. Senior Ellie Beers finished the scoring right before half with a free kick, just over the outstretched arms of the Mustang goalie. The Artesians goalie, Dakota Meadows, did her part in the second half to limit Edgewood's attack, and the Artesians held on for a 3-2 win. The second-ranked Artesian football team moved to 5-0 last Friday with a big conference win on the road at Franklin. Travis Griffey punched it in from the two-yard line to give Martinsville the early lead. Isaac Osborne capped off a long drive with a five-yard run to put the Artesians up at the half. Griffey would strike again to start the third, again from two yards out to put the Arties up by 14. And the senior Osborne put an exclamation mark on the game with a 28-yard run to give Martinsville the 30-7 win. The Artesians host Whiteland tonight at 7 at Ciderwitz Field. The girls' volleyball team moved to 10 and 8 with a win last week over Bloomington North. Martinsville swept the Cougars in three games, 25 to 23, 25 to 22, and 25 to 21. Marlena Kemp had 11 kills for the Artesians. Aaron Cressy and Mackenzie Martin each had seven. The boys' tennis team hosted Edgewood on Tuesday and came away with a win over the Mustangs. Jake Dypert picked up a victory at number one singles, Gus Eaton got the win at number two singles, and Cameron Owens won the number three single spot. The boys take to the court again on Monday at Indian Creek. The cross country teams run in the Mid-State Conference meet this weekend. Brianna Wallace takes a closer look at what motivates the runners to run. Running. Lots of running. Both the boys and girls cross country teams are running up to 30 miles a week. I guess when I run, I have a feeling like I'm free. I know it kind of sounds a little cheesy, but I don't really know how else to explain it. I mean, nobody else can stop me but myself when I'm out there running. I like how it pushes you and you just get to challenge yourself. I just like pushing my limits a lot. Some athletes have been running since middle school. I remember running the mile in fifth grade in PE and just thinking that I'd like to do it as a sport. Colton Plummer started running in seventh grade after a conversation with his friend. He said he's going to practice and he said he's going to cross country and he said it's like just running and I love to run so I just tried it out and then fell in love with the sport. Cross country is unlike other sports. Athletes are independent but combined to form their team. You don't have to ro rely on everyone and you're just your own person out there and you can push yourself to do whatever you want to do and run as fast as you can. Sarah Childress says the team is like a family. It's like another team I've been on and we definitely connect more and I feel like like cross country is one of the hardest sports I've ever done. The Mid-State Conference for Cross Country is tomorrow at Franklin Community High School. For MHS Rewind, I'm Bree Waltz. That's it for a look at sports. Back to you guys. Thanks, Sierra. That wraps it up for this edition of MHS Rewind. For Sierra Bauman, Brianna Waltz, and the rest of the RTV2 class, I'm Emmy Carroll. Thanks for watching, and have a great weekend.